kills black people in our community. Speak to Mr. Bush Biden. Did you ever say, I read somewhere where you said you have never met any good white people? Um, I said in the beginning of my slavery video that I hadn't met any good white people. And my definition of good is that you understand that this is a question of power, that you be willing to give up some power, that you be willing to give up some resources, that you be willing to pay black people reparations for our hunt, our years and years of service in this country, uh, that you be willing to go home and tell your white mother and father about white racism and how it affects and kills black people in our communities. That's my definition of good white people, and I haven't met any like that. Speaking of power, how about empowerment? One of the criticisms that the mainstream community has of us is that we are lacking in family values. Right. We are children having children and men running the streets. Right. What do you say to that? Well, I think that the economic system in this country and the justice system in this country contributes to the delinquency and the destruction of the African family. I think the fact that 25% of the black male population is either in prison or um, under court supervision shows you that a lot of children will not have fathers. I think the fact that the economic system does not embrace uh, or allow African men to have a substantial position in it is the reason why you have so many people committing crimes. So I think it's just hypocritical and some type of trickery for white people and the government and the media to say that there's something wrong with the black community and not draw the link directly to the white power system and how it's designed. You have a survival guide for the black woman, for the African woman. Do you have one for the African man because you know he's endangered in this society? No, actually the survival guide that I have on my album is for um, men and women. I don't separate the issues. I don't consider myself to be a feminist. And so everything that I say is for the survival of the black man and woman as well. You know, you have sort of a mainstream, or some might say bourgeois education. You went to Cornell, you went to Rutgers. A lot of people might find that surprising. Where did you come from? Where were you born? New York City? I was born in the Bronx. I was raised on welfare. I lived in Section 8 housing in the projects. I had a single female-headed household. So the only difference between me and some other people is that everything that I talk about, I've experienced. I've experienced all the programs of the Great Society, whether it was Head Start, free lunch, free cheese, free peanut butter, clothes, rent subsidies, or whatever it was. Now, um, I distinguish myself from other people that may have gone to these institutions because I haven't forgotten where I come from. I'm not ashamed to say I was on welfare. I'm not ashamed to talk about the pain that it causes in our community, and I'm not ashamed of myself in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I have absolutely no desire to be white. What is the solution for us? Obviously, look, look at history. They out there, it hasn't been their help that's mm. brought us here. Right. How do we go further? How I do we think move that on? We as a people are going to have to examine our economic relationship to America and corporations and divest our money in the same way blacks in South Africa had to divest from corporations that control their economy. I think that young people buy a lot of sneakers and jackets and jewelry, shoes and stuff, and myself included. I think that we need to examine which corporations we're giving the mo most money to, and then we need to stop. And we need to not support anything.